And we are live. Gonna give just a minute here to see, let people join. We're live for our three o'clock live stream. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Beautiful. Looks like we've got some people joining in. Thank you so much for joining us for our three o'clock live stream from Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. Today I'm gonna be talking about redwood roots. The roots of a redwood and what an important part they play in helping these trees live such a very long time and be so resilient. Great, I see some likes coming in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first off, I want to say hello. My name is Kyle. I'm a park interpretive specialist for California State Parks, and today I'm out at Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park, part of Redwood State and National Park. Um, today I'm going to be talking about redwood roots. I've got a beautiful tree right behind me, but before I start, I just want to recognize that many of you are sheltering at home um, with COVID-19 going on. I want to thank you so much for doing your part to help flatten the curve of COVID-19 by staying home, practicing social distancing. Um, we're doing these live streams at 3 p.m. every single day. You might be wondering, why are you out in the park when I'm sheltering in place? And part of the reason that we're doing this is um, knowing that so many of you are home. We want to bring a piece of the parks to you to let you have a little bit of that in your home. Um, to give you a little bit of that outdoor scenery you might be missing, and hopefully to give you some ideas of things you might be excited to return to uh, when our parks are able to, uh, when our parks are open again. So thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I'm just going to talk for a couple minutes about redwood roots. If you do have any questions um, about redwood trees or anything just general about the parks, um, go ahead and pop it right down in the comments here. If you do like our 3 p.m. live streams, go ahead and share this. You can watch it with your friends in a watch party, watch it at the same time. Um, or just make sure that they're, they're getting some good parks content in their lives as well. So th I thank you again all so much for tuning in. So I have right behind me a beautiful redwood tree. And today I want to talk a little bit about their roots and what an important part that they play. So again, um, most of my programs focus on Humboldt history. These trees are such an integral part of the history of Humboldt. They've been around for thousands of years in the fossil record since the time of dinosaurs. These trees have been growing in this area. Got my first little uh, comment there. Thank you so much for joining, Jasmine. Um, so these trees have been around uh, for thousands of years, since the time of dinosaurs, thousands, millions of years. And their original range could have gone all the way down um, through most of California, San Diego. The remaining range of old growth redwoods is now five or 4% uh, of their original range. Uh, most of them are protected, thankfully. But these trees have been around for a long time and now are in such a kind of specific habitat, a unique area, and are so kind of um, closely identified with Humboldt and its history here. A large part logging in the past. So, the root system. What kind of part does this play for the trees? Um, what I want to talk about is how it really has helped them to um, exist for so long and their, how their root system really is an important part of, of their lifetime. So, these trees are massive. They can grow up to 400 feet tall, they can live well over 2,000 years, up to about 3,000 years, incredibly old trees, incredibly massive trees. Now, roots for plants and trees, um, besides being uh, able to absorb nutrients and things like that, play a really important role in their structure and being able to stand. So for a tree that's up to 400 feet tall and can live for thousands and thousands of years, how deep in the ground do you think their roots go? And you can go ahead and pop your answer right here into the comments. I'll give a couple seconds because I know there is a bit of delay. Um, so we'll just dance around here for a minute. How deep do you think the roots of a redwood grow um, for them to be able to stand so tall and for so long, for thousands of years? How deep do these roots go in the ground that they're able to kind of hold them up like this for so long? Give a couple of seconds and see if we have any answers. Anybody popping in? These amazing trees that can live so very long and grow to be so very tall. How deep in the ground do you think their roots go? I got my first comment from Jeremy Lynn. 80 feet, 80 feet deep. These roots growing way deep down to the ground, 80 feet. Got some other questions, five, or five feet, uh, one answer, as tall as the tree. So as tall as the tree is, the roots grow deep. It's a great answer, 500 feet. Great answers, you guys, great answers. All right, we've got some ideas pouring in and I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it for you. Uh, Charles Chandler, you had it right. The roots of a redwood only grow about five feet deep. 
That's right, five feet into the ground. These roots do not grow very deep, only about five feet under the ground. Many times in places where um, the paths near the trees are walked really regularly, you can see little bits of the roots poking out. I'll see if I can find some of that a little bit later. Only a couple feet under the ground, these redwood roots grow. But what helps them to be so structurally important is not how deep they grow, but how far out they are able to reach. So these trees, even though their roots only grow about five feet deep, yeah, we've got some answers right on cue there, uh, Francisco. Only growing about five feet deep, but they can grow out up to 50 feet. So I'm gonna flip the camera around here and take a look at some of the trees in my area. And maybe you get a little sick of my face. So all around me I have these redwood trees growing, not all of them redwood trees, but a good number of trees and a good number of massive old growth redwoods like this one right behind me here. This is a huge tree. So while its roots only grow about five feet deep, they can grow out up to 50 feet. So it's incredibly likely that all the trees in this area, although their roots are not going very deep, that they're all connected and interlaced under the ground. So you can think about it like this. You've got all your trees are growing roots and they're not growing very deep, but they're growing out and they're spreading all over the place. And you have another tree growing in the other way and their roots are intertwining all together. So it's almost like all of these trees are holding hands underground. All of their roots intertwining and wrapping around each other spread out and grab other roots. Yes, absolutely. They spread out, they grab other roots, and that way these trees can remain connected and help each other to stand up for so long with these interconnected root systems all intertwining and interwaving. Even though they're not very deep underground, they grow incredibly far out. And a huge portion of the forest, and especially in dense old growth forests, have a massive root system that's all interconnected. Now, besides helping them for structural support, these roots can also share nutrients. So while these roots are growing out, all connecting, all intertwining, all interwrapping inter with each other, they're also able to share nutrients. So if one redwood is in one area where it's getting more sunlight or it's getting more um, nitrogen in the soil or whatever nutrients the tree might need to grow, it's able to share those nutrients with nearby trees in a, uh, through a network called a mycelial network. So those of you who have heard the term mycelium, mycelial network, you know that those terms are very commonly associated with mushrooms. And that's exactly the case for these trees, that there are essentially mushrooms growing around the roots to help create these mycelial networks. So we can think about it this way. All the trees underground are holding hands, they're all interconnected. And in between that, there's little bits of fungus, little bits of mushrooms, that are connecting these roots together through their, through their, uh, through the internal structures in the tree, not just the outside being connected, but inside being connected, so that any nutrients that might be more rich in one area, they're able to transfer that to another area to share with another tree. And that way the trees are all connected, and that way they're all helping each other to kind of promote this resilience that we see in these massive redwood trees, and especially in old growth forests, that these root systems can go out you know, up to 50 feet in every direction, that's massive reach. And for trees growing close to each other, they're all intertwining, they're all sharing nutrients and promoting a really healthy forest all together. So I'm gonna, um, that's kind of my spiel for today, is to talk about the roots, talk about those mycelial networks, and talk about how important those are to the structure of the tree. But now I'd like to just take a moment, I'm gonna walk you around the forest a little bit, we're gonna appreciate some of these massive trees, and if you have any questions about what I've talked about, or any questions just in general, Go ahead and pop it down in the chat here and I'll be happy to talk about any questions you might have. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around so you can see these beautiful massive trees. There's a good number of you guys um, guessing about five, nine, ten feet. Um, you guys are all great answers. All great answers regardless. So I'm right here along Prairie Creek, Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. I'm a little bound to the campfire center. Um, this is where our connection is coming from. So I'm gonna take a walk out this direction and kind of see how far we can get. Um, I know that the signal is gonna start to degrade. So if it gets kind of too unbearable, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll make sure to head back where it'll get a little clearer. But again, thank you guys all for tuning in. We have these live streams happening at three o'clock every single day. So if you like these, you can always share them out. You can always tune in for an interpreter at three o'clock live. 
answering your questions are those candelabra, candelabra redwoods. <laughs> candelabra redwoods. I like that. Uh, I have not heard that term before. Uh, cathedral trees. Oh, these ones right here. All close together. So this is also an interesting adaptation for redwood trees. I talked about a little bit um, last week. I uh, also got a question, how hot is it there right now? It is about, it's a nice warm day. It's probably 60, 70 degrees out right now. We've got beautiful weather today. It's sunny. It's nice out. Um, so last week in my live stream, if you want to learn more about this, I talked about how redwoods from spores. So these are all essentially clonal trees. These are likely the same genetic material as one tree that was damaged or hurt or stressed out, and it grew a bunch of a bunch of uh, identical clones, basically, growing right out of it. And then they have now merged back together in a large number of places. So you can see these are two trees right here. If you look a little further up, you can see that they're split right about, you know, they split out into two trees. But right down here at the base, these two trees have fused together, look like one trunk here. So that's also a common thing with redwoods and especially with clones. Um, in an area called fairy circles. I hadn't heard of them as referred to as candelabra trees, but I love, I love that term. Cinquion Wilderness around Mendocino, yes. Uh, Cinquion Wilderness is one of the parks in the North Coast Redwoods District. And is there a specific tree that's called a candelabra tree? I haven't heard of it before, but um, I've heard of these areas called fairy rings or fairy circles, usually where the tree in the middle is dead. Um, Great, great supplemental information. Thank you, Davin. Beautiful trees. All right, I'm gonna move down a couple more feet this way. Again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and pop them on down in the chat. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you want some more ways to get uh, interacting with the parks, we also have a social media challenge going on called the Parks in Your Home Challenge. Take one minute to take on the interpreter role, what I've been doing for you, and Tell us about something in your house, something you love. It can be your pet. It can be um, a family heirloom that's been passed down. Anything that you think is interesting and you'd like to share with people. And just use the hashtag Parks in Your Home Challenge. We'd love to see your whatever you've got to show off. Absolutely beautiful day out here in Prairie Creek, Redwood State Park. Again, I'm kind of, yes, I'm near the, uh, near the campfire center. Ooh, got a, got a number of other comments in here real quick. Let's see. Yes, Annika, you know exactly the spot right in Prairie Creek next to the campfire center. Our Wi-Fi is coming from the campfire center, so I have to stay near or else my quality starts to degrade and you won't be able to hear me. Big branches growing straight up off of other branches that are the size of trees. Absolutely, and that is a, um, I had not heard it referred to as candelabra trees, but that really is a perfect term. Uh, a term used for scientifically pretty regularly is called reiteration. So basically what happens is the same thing that's happening over here with this tree having clones um, all growing around the base, except for that those clones sprout up from higher up in the tree. So oftentimes you'll have a tree with multiple reiterations, multiple full-size redwood trees growing up out of the branches. It's an incredible thing to see. And there are a number of them here in Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park, but I don't see any around me right now, unfortunately. I would love to show you some reiterations. It's incredible, incredible to see. So basically it looks like when you look at the very top of a tree that you have like five or six trees growing up all out of the top. How old are the redwood trees? Are they considered old growth? Um, here at Prairie Creek, I believe portions were logged, but there are still some old growth redwood trees here. There are some absolute giants in this area. So uh, redwood trees can grow up to around 3,000 years old. Um, I don't know the exact age of a number of trees here, but this is considered in some areas an old growth redwood forest. So there are trees here that are thousands of years old. Great question, Laura. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today, but if you do have any more questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. I'll come back to this later today or tomorrow and comment back on any questions that I wasn't quite able to answer live. But again, thank you guys all so much for joining me today. 
in the beautiful Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. Tune in uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. to be in Humboldt Redwood State Park with Griff. It's a great live program. And um, hopefully we'll be seeing you guys on these live streams. And hopefully we'll be seeing your parks in your home challenges very soon. We'd love to see some of those um, coming from you guys who are loving this. Absolutely in love for this park. I am absolutely in love with this park as well. So thank you guys all so much for tuning in. Uh, join us again for a live stream every day at 3 p.m. We really appreciate you guys being here. And hopefully we will talk to you again soon. And very hopefully we will see you in the parks again soon. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in.